everything's fine because there's merch in the store. Yeah, <laughs> merch in the store. We're all stuck inside and we miss the outdoors. Wait, don't think about that. Stop thinking about that. I mean, what? I miss human touch. Merch in the store, new merch in the store. Ah, come on. Sake demo on this. Sake ka. Yeah, this is my favorite dub of all time. Don't at me. Welcome back to the channel. Young and old, new and returning. Stands and haters. Trees and flowers. Well, actually, that's not fair. You're all flowers uh, to me. But, <laughs> but yes, it's good to have you all back. And if you are new, why not consider subscribing? I would really appreciate it. And it does help out the channel way more than you know. So, thank you. And it was inevitable. I mean, I am a commentary channel. So naturally, it's time to add the dulcet tones of my voice to the Shane Dawson situation, which I find incredibly poignant now of all times, as he attempts to rework himself back onto the internet. To understand Shane Dawson, we have to understand Shane Yaw. Shane Yaw, Shane Dawson's real name, by the way, was born on July 19th, 1988, and originally started his YouTube channel to showcase videos that he made in high school. He slowly developed over the years, however, when one of his videos caused his family to lose their job at Jenny Craig after he showcased some unprofessional workplace behavior, he dedicated himself full-time to YouTube, which at the time was a much more viable source of income than it is now. Across his three channels, Shane Dawson TV, Shane Dawson TV 2, now renamed Human Emoji, which has been dead for some time, and Shane, his vlogging channel, he amassed a large audience in the millions, and prior to the adpocalypse, found himself making about $10 per thousand views, an almost unheard of amount in the current climate. But he wasn't merely content to just settle with YouTube. He had his eyes on bigger things and slowly expanded to the world of film and television, releasing several movies and TV shows that all amounted to middling ratings. However, his money had been made. And it is as his career advanced that his more seedy underbelly began to show. Most recently, Shane is back in the news for the untimely of his kitten. Or should I say, him and his partner Ryland's kitten. Yes, Ryland is Shane's partner. They met a month or two following Shane's emotional coming out video. However, the two both find themselves culpable for this horrible incident. Shane and Ryland failed to introduce their kitten slowly to their two big dogs, put them together right away, and the dogs injured it so severely that it Horribly irresponsible and unfortunate, especially considering that they had only had this kitten for about a week. And Shane was quick to post on his Instagram story concerning the fact. He said, quote, My heart is broken, and I've never felt so much pain before, but I truly believe everything happens for a reason. Not to get too hard, too fast, Shane, but I believe that reason is, say it with me now, negligence. I hope if you are dealing with loss that this conversation helps you. You are not alone, and you never were. We are all in this together. But as many of you know, this is not the first time that Shane has found himself embroiled in controversy. However, his dedicated fan base is so quick to attempt to brush everything under the rug under the guise of Shane has already apologized. Let me make this clear. I'm not a fan of cancel culture, and I think it's toxic. However, when someone has done as many absurd things as Shane has in the past, it gets to a point where you have to consider that maybe He's just an objectively bad person. Yes, people can grow from their mistakes. But let me clarify, why are you trying to say a person who so adamantly pretends to be poor as an aesthetic has changed? This is a man who uses his massive platform to host problematic white people like Jake Paul, like Tana Manjo, like Jeffree Star, and to try to get the public to forgive them? or see their side, in spite of everything objectively problematic that they've done. Some people are so determined to say that he's changed drastically. To that I would say if he's changed from his supposedly racist past, then where are all the people of color that he's giving a platform? Oh wait, it's hard to do that when you're too busy joking about them, still to this day. Maybe Shane, the big lug, the heart of gold guy that everyone tries to make him out to be, only acts like an empath when it's convenient and makes him likable. As creators, we are expected to evolve and move forward, to learn from our mistakes. The problem that I personally have with Shane's channel 
was its unbecoming dedication to shock value humor in the past that slowly grew this weird foliage of correctness over it, reaching its vines out like arms begging for forgiveness in an attempt to hide behavior that we were led to believe was behind him. However, the evidence, both past and present, proves otherwise. Listen, we have to remember that we as an audience help draw the line between acceptable and unacceptable. Shane's tactics rely on a constant push towards acceptance. And when this happens, and old behavior isn't acknowledged ahead of some Twitter threads, it not only shows an attempt to ignore the past, but it also throws into suspicion a person's actual drive to change their lifestyle. I'm certainly not the first one to call out or make a video on Shane. And even former friends in the past have made statements about him. For instance, Brie Esrig, while not immediately acknowledging him by name, calling him Plain Pawson, claiming that it's in fitting with how Shane seems to talk about people behind their back. Brie claims at length that Shane's racist activities drove her own friend out of town, and when confronted with it, he hid behind the umbrella of his childhood trauma and hit back with straw man arguments like, wow, you really can't take a joke, or my audience loves this and they're mostly people of color. Listen, Shane, regardless of what fans are what race and tell you you're allowed to do it, you should not use that as your moral compass. By doing that, you are abdicating responsibility, deflecting it to your audience, and making a sad attempt to escape all culpability in the event that someone decides to finally call you on your actions. So you know what I'm going to do with this video? Just that. This video will be a showcase of every problematic instance that I could find in some way, shape, or form that golden boy Shane has gotten himself into. The comments he's made, the jokes that he's done, the sketches, the channels, everything. And I will not tell you to believe one way or another. We are going to look at every piece of evidence that I have. And at the end, I will make my final statement, and you, the audience, will make your final decision. Remember, at the heart of it, commentary is centered around the idea of people wanting other people to be better. And that's what I want. I want a better atmosphere for this platform, and I personally don't believe that it's being fostered by people who attempt to hide their poor apologies and flagrant past transgressions behind constantly plugging their merch. So I will list off evidence piece by piece, and we'll go on this little roller coaster together. So grab your popcorn, your water, or whatever you need, and let's take a look at the sordid past of Shane Dawson. Here's one of the more infamous clips. This is Shane making inappropriate comments to a photo of Willow Smith. Oh, Willow. Oh, I'll whip your hair back and forth. Oh. Unfortunately, this kind of behavior is not outside of the realm of things that Shane normally did. And frankly, it's just the tip of a hideous iceberg. This is from one of Shane's old sketches. The girl in this video is a pre-tween. My favorite flavor of popsicle is Michael Jackson didn't with me. I'm a in his fine ass. I named my super Yana because she loves to get beat up. And he put her into a situation where she had to say these kinds of jokes. Uh, jokes in air quotes, by the way. We then transition into some of Shane's casual racism. Oh, bitch monkey woman, you're the best! Yeah, that's my face too, sister. But Shane's family is not entirely innocent in all of this. His mom is frequently complacent with his activities. Here they are on Omegle. I love you too, can you twerk for us? I know twerking is insane. Oh, I love you too. Oh, I love you too. No, shut up and twerk. Maybe she can't hear us. Hear it. Okay, okay. Twerk for us. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. She's moving in front of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. girl. <laughs> yeah. Now tell her to show herself. Stop it, Shane Lee. <laughs> love you. Oh, yeah. Say love you. So they can't hear us then? Some of them can. While Shane's mom attempts to stop him, she doesn't seem to be doing it so strong. Here's some brief misconduct of Shane with a dog. Oh yeah, daddy likes. <laughs> Disgusting. But Shane was always emboldened by his audience. This is a tweet from 2012 saying, Daily vlogging is my new favorite thing. I just got my 12-year-old cousin to give a 
up to a cocktail weenie. Hashtag this is the life. Oh yes, him and putting the mouths of miners near phallic objects is a repeated pattern. And I believe this also happened around the same time that this music video happened. And Lucy, I checked my statistics and I have a lot of child b****s watching, so can you please eat a cocktail weenie? Do it slow. <laughs> oh. Oh, I like uh, that chalk, that weenie. Ooh, it tastes so good. Do like an Asian, like. I let you play with Barbies and then we'd bake cookies. Here's more of Shane's casual racism, this time towards Trayvon Martin, a black boy who is unjustly killed by a police officer. Trayvon Martin. Maybe you wouldn't been walking this around the streets if you had a job. Oh! <laughs> it's a game! Oh yeah, really got the whole squad laughing, Shane. It's just a game is not an excuse. You sound like those dudes who used to end up on TCAP. It was just so-and-so. Oh, but we never did this or that. Ignorance of morally right and wrong is no excuse, especially not in a game setting. Here are some examples of forum posts by Shane with repeated suggestive messages. Mind you that Shane's audience largely comprised of young children and early teenagers. I'll read you some of the more disgusting ones. Show me your or face. Show me your creepy face. Show me your crotch. Show me your mouth. I'm filming a and you're the star. Show me your best move. Show me your best birth pose. And the disgusting thing is, his audience would actually respond to this. But at least even back then, there were some people who knew that this was disgusting. It's just sad that their voice wasn't amplified properly. Here's more of Shane's casual racism, this time towards someone who is featured often in his videos, and that he claims as a friend. If this is how he talks about his friends, I'd hate to see how he talks about his enemies. For my movie, The Collective, and uh, I told them, you know, Shauna, I really want her to have a channel, and she has a lot of fans, and like, she doesn't know what she's doing, she doesn't know how to make a video, she's black, she doesn't even know how to, she just slaps her keyboard. So, they want to- Shane's also had a past of referring to his audience members inappropriately on Twitter. The hashtag DawsonWhores immediately comes to my mind, and you can still find evidence of that cataloged on the Wayback Machine. That, among other instances of him being under the influence during interactions with viewers, which, as we all know, could never go wrong, right? And here's a few more instances of Shane saying something that we all know he shouldn't be saying. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, it is me, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And I just want to let you know that I, Liberty Van Fett, am choosing you to be my new object of affection. You should be! I'm sorry, when I become Nikki, I just get so angry. Ah, uh, yes. Shane's frequent use of blackface. While disgusting, it's not the only time that he's taken advantage of racial stereotypes. I seem to remember this certain part of a parody song that he wrote. Ching chong wong, ching chong dong, ding dong. That means go buy my new song. Ding ding wang wang ding 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 chi. That means holy sh I'm 30. But Shane's misgivings didn't just extend to people of color. It extended to children. Here's evidence of Shane's Visualizing a literal baby. Giving me a caption for this picture. <laughs> Is this picture considered ch? I don't think so, right? It's only ch if you can like see it. Either way, I'm totally printing it out and taping it on my bathroom mirror. You know, just for inspiration. Disgusting. Utterly disgusting. And it's funny because Shane would go on later to make inappropriate comments on a podcast about children again. And when he made a response, he said the clip excluded certain bits of context. That's funny because the only bits that got cut out were for brevity. This child was probably six years old and um, I was taking a picture of something and the kid turns to me and goes, oh, are you Instagramming? And first of all, how does a five-year-old, six-year-old know what Instagram is? Right. Which is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I was embarrassed because yes, I was and it was a picture of my salad. <laughs> and the six-year-old girl goes, um, oh, how many followers do you have? I have 125,000. No was almost as big as mine. Really? And I said, okay, little big dick, why do you have so many followers? And she goes, oh, I'm a cheerleader. And I'm like, oh, really? And she shows me her Instagrams, which are like, first of all, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but like, she's like sexy. She's like sexy. 
you're disgusting. I know. Listen, we've talked about. But this before. is the, Shane. Like, <laughs> like, do not say this. And do, like, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, you will get arrested. Like, okay. he kind of can. He, Listen, he allegedly, has this justification, justification for. Okay. And it's so disturbing. And like, I, I just pretend that he doesn't. <laughs> okay, wait, no, like, no. Let me explain. Let no. me explain. Oh god. Here's my justification for. Can't. Here's my thing. People have foot fetishes. People have fetishes about, you know, everything. Fine. Everybody do your thing. So why is it when somebody looks at. A Google's like naked baby on Google and talk to it, they can get arrested. Because, I don't understand. Because that. here's so the like, worst part of it. I actually went to Google and I'm like, oh I don't want to see. You can get wanna, arrested. I know, but I just wanted to see, like, okay, let me just pretend, yeah. let me pretend like I'm a file for sex. So I typed in naked baby. First of all, they were sexy. <laughs> okay, back to the Instagram. Um, so I look at this little girl's pictures, and she had makeup on. She had her tongue out. She was doing, like, the peace sign. She was doing a backflip. Is she, like, honey boo-boo? Is she fat? No, she was, like, a skinny little sexy six-year-old. Well, they were saying, oh, Shane talked about Googling naked babies, which, by the way, I never did. Like, I was making a joke and telling a story and lying and being like, well, I Googled naked babies. Of course I didn't Google naked babies. I'm busy. I don't have time to Google fucking naked babies. First of all, I said I wasn't looking for child. They cut that out. Then I said, after that, I don't know why anybody would be turned on by babies. And they cut that out. I was embarrassed because, yes, I was. And it was a picture of my salad. <laughs> so then, oh, the soup plantation yes, salad. I saw it. It looked amazing. And the six-year-old girl goes, um, oh, how many followers do you have? I mean, first of all, it was almost like one of those contests where it's like, how big is your dick? <laughs> and this kid slapped his huge, her huge dick on the table having sex with children or children or anything of that nature is terrible sure. and you should not do it but <laughs> but <laughs> but here's my thing coming back this is another instance of shane's music carrying an overtly racist message daddy screaming and yelling have more babies i can sell them black guys love him so now she's selling watermelon no one loves but one of the sickest shrines he ever created to minors and sexual content was the channel hey it's millie which he created in conjunction with Rafi and Benny Fine, otherwise known as the Fine Bros. This channel was active between June of 2010 and October of 2012. Millie, the puppet in this instance, is eight, and while initially portrayed as innocent, frequently uses inappropriate language, makes sexual innuendos, talks about being sexually aroused, and the object of her affection is frequently Shane. Oh, and also references to abuse too, to top it all off. Here's some interesting footage from one of their episodes. You know what we could do, Millie? What? Motorboat! What's motorboat? <laughs> Alright, Millie, that's it. That's all the mail we have today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Shane. And it was amazing to finally meet my hero. Oh, well, it was amazing to meet you, and I'm sure we're gonna hang out all the time. When? When specifically uh, am I gonna see you again? Gosh, uh, you know what? I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll let you know. Well, but I don't have a phone. I I'll see, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, Shane, don't leave me here. If you want to leave me something, uh, my P.O. box is in the car. See you later, Billy. Shane! Reminder as we go forward that a lot of this content has been scrubbed from the channel entirely. Now, while Shane Dawson is definitely at fault for these videos, more so for making himself the love interest of a severely abused eight-year-old girl, he isn't the only one in the wrong. Rafi Fine had plenty of his own sick moments. Here's another clip, and keep remembering while you watch these pieces of footage that adult men wrote these skits. What? Maybe I'm not understanding this right. Maybe you're not. I don't know what porn is. Oh. So what is Rafi? It is a type of filmmaking. Oh, it's a filmmaking, yay! Like no. this! We're making together! No, we're not Everyone making together! Watch Rafi the grown man! They burned with an eight-year-old! No. Almost nine! It's a type of filmmaking and films that are only for adults. It's like segregation, like back when the blacks weren't allowed to go to the same bathroom. Not the same thing <laughs> whatsoever. Yes, it is! You're segregating little kids! All of my little kid friends will be from, from we should be able to watch whatever we want. I want to watch anything I want, whether it's porn or candy. I want to watch whatever I want, even if it's that bit on glee. For little kids, makes us grow up to be strong like me. Oh yeah, even in their extra channel endeavors, they just couldn't escape those racist jokes, could they? Oh, and uh, concerning that clip with Willow, I don't quite think that this little bit of footage aged well.
What business does a child puppet have singing about implants? Yeah, that's what I thought. Here's another instance from the channel. This is Shane's quote-unquote black personality interacting with the puppet with some absolutely crude and disgusting conversation. I'm Millie! So Millie, you a fan of the D? Are you talking about your big d What does d mean? What? No! I was talking about D like DZ. Man, where did you learn how to talk like that? From watching Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez? Yeah, and I Carly. She's so cool and attractive. I love the way her hair flows down her back and brushes over her tight ass. Oh, that sh is so hot. And you know her and her butch friend experiment. I mean, wouldn't you, DZ? Oh, oh, and her newly developed breath. They're speaking to me. They're saying, hey, hey, Millie, do you want to suck on us? Ooh. I mean, don't you think she's sexy, Daisy? Mm. Hey, what does sexy mean? Whoa! Jump bluff! Daisy, did you just... What? No! Wait, wait, Daisy, follow-up question. What does coming mean? Can you explain it to me in graphic detail? Uh, yeah. I mean, no. I mean... Whoa! That reminds me of the thing that my dad used to shove in my mouth when I was three. Mm. Oh, and fun story about the content on this channel, it frequently wasn't hidden behind an 18 plus rating. Because with this kind of a colorful intro, you can absolutely see how this could easily bait as a kid's show. Oh yes, and by the way Shane, no matter the time, no matter the place, jokes about assaulting your fans in your merch is never okay. Time to see some hot sexy wearing my Hot Topic shirts. Damn. Oh, if I Justine wasn't watching, I would rape all of you. <clears throat> all right, you guys. What a putrid human being. Oh, and uh, here's a few more bits of him with animals. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> he does this every time. Oh, but you want to know what's even funnier to Shane than tragedy? Ableism. And this is my problem. I don't know shit about history. When I was in high school, I hated history. Almost as much as I hated my blind home ec teacher. The following clips are a little bit more disturbing than others, and I know that's saying a lot, especially given what we've seen so far. But these are instances of Shane being just downright creepy with actual minors. And keep in mind, faces are censored for privacy. I blow everybody a kiss like you're a mermaid. That was the worst <laughs> kiss I've ever seen. That was terrible. I would never have her wife so wet. You know what you should do to dry yourself off? Go dance on top of that table over there. She didn't even hesitate. Okay! <laughs> Get that dubstep dance. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, we don't want to... more hip action. Yeah, we don't want to have s*** with you yet. Yeah. There we hip, go. Hip Come here, come here. Get over here. Give me a hug. Breastfeed. Take a sip, take a sip. Take a sip. So much milk. Actually, I'm sure there's more milk over there. Can you please breastfeed with, with Shauna, please? That would make me. Look at you. Where'd you get your pants at? Look, it's like little shenanigans. H&M. H and &M? Girl, ooh, that sounds dirty. That sounds rough. H&M. Good job, Lucy. But next time, shake your titties more. And you, take off the jacket and show more. Okay, give her a lap dance. All you ladies who are like this, Oh my god! Shane, I would certainly hope you don't want to do anything with that child. And for all intents and purposes, yes, Shane did post a taking accountability video. But during the course of this whole video, he tries to play it off like the video he's making isn't reactionary. 
He pretends like the things he's apologizing for didn't just go viral at the time that he was apologizing for them. Shane, I ask you, if you have really changed and you're really sorry, why didn't you make an apology long before this? You had plenty of time, even in the middle of your busy schedule. You continued to address everything that you did as an afterthought, even after Jenna Marbles showed the footage that people were upset about. But you continue to play it down and dismiss it like it's not you being what you are. And you use this reverse psychology of, you don't have to forgive me. Yeah, we don't have to, because we shouldn't. Dumb jokes are one thing, but preying on the innocence of a little girl is another and cannot be undone. And after a lot of this footage went viral, multiple people came forward to share their instances of inappropriate contact with Shane, including details of private web chats, where Shane would often get more minors to twerk for him. The old Austin Jones special. It seems that these things frequently happened on the website Tiny Chat. His influence was so strong that he was making people as young as 11 learn to twerk in an attempt to get him to notice them, only leaving the people now feeling violated and manipulated. There's some footage of these chats. You'll have to excuse the poor audio quality, but his language is still very telling. And Shane was even brazen in public with his antics during his vlogs. Here he is inside of a Claire's. Yeah, you know, Claire's, that store meant for children. Oh, I wish I could suck his d I did. It was so good. Me too. <laughs> You're so horrible. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, we're here at a kid's store. <laughs> I'm here with the kid. Oh, but you thought I forgot about the racism parade. Nope, still going. Oh, this is gonna be the nastiest face thing ever. Almost as nasty as the black girl's hair on the back of the box. <laughs> and then to step us closer to the present day, here he is on a podcast again. Um, it was right after a meet and greet, and I was in, uh, I think, a 7-Eleven or something, and I was, like, looking for medicine. I don't remember. I was sick. I was kissing a lot of fans on the lips. Um, I saw that. Balls. Yeah, I was out of it. Ballers. I was a yeah. super sinus infection, totally out yeah, of it, a yeah, couple yeah. fireballs in. Uh, cool, Which, man. by the way, can we talk about, do you have fans who um, want to f*** you? Like, but young? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, people don't, like, tweet at me or, like, write that about, I mean, people write it in the comments on YouTube, but I try to not go that far into it. That's the thing. Like, I get a lot of, um, like, a lot of these young girls, like, 12, just, yeah. oh, she have a cock in my mouth, like, all this stuff. Um, okay. And and I see the <laughs> tweets, and then I meet them in person, and they'll, like, grab my butt, and I'll hear them, like, I touched his ass, oh, I wanted to fuck my pussy, or whatever. <laughs> but then I think about it. I think about it, and I'm like, okay, should I call them on their bluff? Like, what oh if a fan God. comes up, and they're, like, 12? It's about to get real. They're, like, 12. And they're, like, oh, she, oh, I want to fuck you, fucking suck my dick, and suck my pussy, or whatever. And then what if I looked at them, and what if I was, like, all right. And I gave them a hotel key, and I'm, like, let's fucking do it. <laughs> would they go through with would it? Would they show up? Also, that needs to be a video. Oh, you I they like down. Down. You would get arrested, though. Well, no, like, no, no. For even, but you would never let it get to that point. Well, yeah, but here's never. the point: Every, I let it get. Yeah, to. everyone before everyone gets offended. Just, just. This, this is, is all hypothetical. So hypothetical. Calm down. Yeah. Chill out, Lacey Green. Shane's here. Okay? So I lay, I lay, say it. She lays down, right? Mm -hmm. She's twelve. Oh Imagine if your twelve-year-old self. Go back in your brain. Oh my god! Right? Uh, you were probably in love with what Joey Fatone. I feel like that's that that's a good match for me. Mm. I'm like the Joey Fatone of now. Like kind Justin of fat, Taylor hairy. Thomas. Joey wishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine, like, you're laying your 12-year-old self, and then a fucking hairy Shane Dawson with his fucking hairy man body, 26, fucking crawls up on the bed. It's like, all right, let me get my c*** out. Like, that's the scariest thing. And that's the that's actually the grudge. That's the scariest thing in the whole world. Right? So I want, I want these kids to know. That's actually the grudge. Sex with me is gross as <laughs> it's disgusting. You don't oh want it. God. Stop asking for I it. I mean, you know, now that you say that, it's actually... What in the fuck? The idea that the other two hosts can sit here and casually laugh and enable this is disgusting in its own right. But hearing Shane's thought process, hearing the way that his mind machinates and creates this scenario, even for the purpose of a quote-unquote joke, is absolutely blood-curdling. It is nauseating. It is horrifying. 
Shane, you talk so much about apologies, making a difference, and being different. It's hearing these little streams of consciousness that you're so able to effortlessly pour forward that's enough to make anyone wonder how much of it is just performative. And the sad thing is, he still has a dedicated army of stands that will most likely be here to dislike this video, because they're all behind him. They're here for him coming back on TikTok and Ryland's channel. Shane knows that his stands will stick around a 40 plus minute video on Ryland's channel just to catch a glimpse of him, just to check up on him. It is a manipulative business tactic. And you don't just whoops into that. You don't just whoops into casually plugging your merch and your slime in the middle of people trying to hold you culpable for your actions. Shane, I am not here to disregard any of the suffering that you have faced in the past. Everyone has their own pain. Everyone has grown up with trouble. But you had a chance to be a positive a progressive icon for so many young people and you squandered it. You fostered an audience that just calls people snowflakes if they get offended. Oh yeah, I'm real scared of if you hate on me, you gay. Well guess what, joke's on you. I was already filled with hate and already gay. Oh and too young to know? Well guess what? I am certainly old enough to not only remember that, but to know better than to go around pouring poison all over the internet, like it's some kind of fertilizer. Shane's career is built on top of manipulation, of manipulating the people around him to think that he actually cares, and to manipulating his fanbase into believing that they actually matter to him. So let him cry to Jeffree Star and everyone else about not having enough money, but he sure seems to be sitting pretty in Calabasas. And with that, well that's where we end. I know, it's unsatisfying, but it's unfortunately just how it is. Not everything has a pretty ending, especially the case of Shane Dawson. And unless he steps away from the internet only to come back in his geriatric age as some positive, reformed figure, I cannot see myself or a lot of people having any kind of forgiveness for him anytime soon. But it's up to you. Let me know what you think. And please be honest. Because I will never censor someone who has a different opinion than my own. I am prepared for hate, for vitriol, for violence, for death threats from 11 year olds. I'm ready for anything. Because to me, spreading the message of the things that this man continues to do is more important to me than the fear of all of that combined. And if I can even inform 12 or one or 200 people about the things that Shane is responsible for, maybe that's the difference we need. But I'll leave that up to you. And I will say thank you for watching this rather long-winded video. Remember that if you enjoyed the coverage, leave a like, subscribe to stay tuned for more, and share the video around. The more discussion that we can foster around this topic, the better. Whenever you're watching this, I hope you have a good rest of your day and an even better tomorrow. I love you. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I do. I love every single one of you. My haters, my fans, everyone. Because that's what we need if we want to have any kind of real discussion. I will see you in the next episode of Whatever I Make. Whatever that may be, hey, why not comment and tell me what you want to see? But until next time, this has been the Hotbox. Bye. What do you think this is? Waiting for an excruciating amount of time and possibly some of the worst conditions imaginable, all for something you have no idea if it's worth it or not.